Throughout his career, Jimmy Butler has never shied away from who he is. He knows that he's not everybody's cup of tea, and you know what? He doesn't care. Mostly because above everything else, he's a damn fine basketball player. And the times when other stars have tried to bully and trash talk him, they've all found out why the Miami Heat star is often called Himmy Butler. Let's go back to 2022 when Jimmy was looking to settle the score with his former team, the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, Jimmy was very happy with his new position within the Miami Heat organization. He was leading the sort of team that he always wanted, and they were finding great success at the time. Looking back, it's fair to say that his brief playing time for the Sixers a few years before just didn't work out right. But that doesn't mean that Jimmy wasn't hurt when the team picked multiple other players, including Tobias Harris, over him. In the playoffs in 2022, the first seed Heat were battling the Sixers and Miami led the series 3-2. Just one more win and it progressed to the Eastern Conference Finals. All series long, people watched as Butler delivered a mixed bag of results. In one game, he just scored 15 points, but then he put up 40 just a few nights later. He was all over the place, but he was generally looking like a strong, driven team captain. There wasn't a whole lot of trash talking in the series to that point, but there was some serious bad blood. That's because when Jimmy played for the Sixers a few seasons before, things ended badly. This was a tough breakup. Butler first joined the Sixers with high hopes and optimism, but he quickly realized there was a lack of leadership on that team. Things got rough between Butler and the Sixers, and they decided to go their separate ways. All these years later, Jimmy still wanted to prove something to his former team. When the first half of Game 6 ended, Jimmy only had 9 points, 3 rebounds, and 0 assists, or steals. The Heat only had a 1 point lead, and they were playing in Philly, so many people thought that the 76ers could even the series here, especially since Butler wasn't lighting up the scoreboard. But when the second half got started, Butler was ready to show the Philly crowd what they were missing. Whatever the reason, Jimmy turned it on in the second half, scoring 23 points, 5 rebounds, 1 steal, and 4 blocks. The Sixers threw everything they could at him, including the towering power of Joel Embiid, but it just wasn't enough. When the game was over, the series was claimed by Miami, and Jimmy was spotted walking back to the locker room shouting, Tobias Harris over me? Repeatedly? He wanted the Sixers to know just how much they screwed up by letting him go. It's safe to say that Butler burned all his bridges back to Philadelphia that night, but that's nothing compared to the time he got into it with his own teammate during one nasty practice session. This story takes place when Jimmy was spending his time playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves. At the time, Butler was the veteran voice of reason on the team, the experienced player who was supposed to impart wisdom to young players like Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. But speaking of Towns, he and Jimmy never really got along. The two had butted heads numerous times, and everyone on the team knew that they weren't ever going to be pals. Did we just become best friends? No. So one day, the team gets together for a scrimmage session, and head coach Tom Thibodeau starts things off by dividing the team into groups. Teague would talk about this incident years later, stating that Jimmy was adamant about not playing with, but against, Carl Anthony Towns. Instead, he assembled his own B team filled with, as Teague put it, He picked the bad news bears. He wasn't picking the best and brightest on the roster, in other words. But he had his heart set on bringing Towns down, even in just a practice session. I got cat, Jimmy said as the practice was about to start. Right away, he stole the ball from Towns and then scored. He then taunted Carl Anthony, who taunted him back, and told Jimmy that he was too little. <laughs> Apparently, that was all Butler needed to hear. He went on a 10-0 run, according to Teague. Uh, Butler was dunking, hitting threes, stealing the ball, and more. He was feeling himself and letting everyone know it. In the end, Jimmy's B squad beat Carl Anthony Towns and the starters 18-6. As you can imagine, Jimmy didn't stick around with the Timberwolves much longer. This is proof that Jimmy ain't afraid of anybody, even his own teammates. Cat is considered one of the best defenders in the league and definitely towers over Jimmy, but that didn't phase him or slow him down. But this shouldn't surprise anyone because Jimmy Butler isn't frightened by anyone, even the most intimidating defenders in the league. Drew Holiday is considered one of the greatest defensive players in the entire NBA. He has an unnatural ability to shut down just about anyone, no matter their size. Last season, he felt confident that he could stop Jimmy Butler in the opening round of the playoffs. After all, Holiday was playing for the top seed in the East, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Heat limped into the playoffs as the eighth seed after winning the play-in tournament. Holiday was going to make mincemeat of Jimmy, and you could tell he wasn't afraid at all. In a shocking move that blindsided just about every NBA fan, the Heat not only kept the series competitive, they actually pulled ahead. 
By the time Game 5 came around, Miami had a 3-1 lead, and the Bucks were dangerously close to not even making the second round of the playoffs. How was that possible when they were the favorites to go all the way to the NBA Finals? Obviously, tensions were high, and Holiday and Butler were chirping at each other throughout the game, with Holiday talking smack after a smooth, easy two points from Butler in the fourth quarter. The Heat were down by four points at that moment, and then Jimmy Butler got laser focused on winning. Just seconds, Jimmy posted a clutch three pointer to tie the game. But Butler got his ultimate revenge when the game had only two seconds left. The Heat needed only two points to tie the game, but they were just about out of time. Well, that would have been true for anyone else, but not Jimmy Butler. In a hard-to-believe superhero-like acrobatic move, Jimmy caught a deep inbound pass and sent the ball up to the basket as he came crashing down on his back. The game went to overtime and everyone was surprised. Well, everyone aside from Butler, of course. He knew he had it in him and he was determined to make Drew regret his trash talking. In the end, Jimmy had 42 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block in an epic game that sent Drew Holiday and the Bucks home. It was an NBA moment unlike any other, filled with personal drama and an unforgettable shot. But it wasn't the only time when Jimmy would receive some serious trash talking and give it right back in the playoffs. Like everyone, Grant Williams probably regrets a few things in his life. It's only human. But the thing that plays again and again in his head when he's up late at night is the game where he decided to quite literally get in Jimmy Butler's face in the 2023 playoffs. Game 2, Eastern Conference Finals. The Heat had started the playoffs with a bang by taking out the Bucks, then worked past the Knicks, and were now squaring off against the Boston Celtics, who weren't looking to mess around. The team was sure that they were better than the Heat, and they wanted to put an end to this Cinderella story that saw the 8th seed just a few victories away from competing for a championship. The Heat stole Game 1 on the road, and when Game 2 started, TD Garden was electric with Boston fans ready to see Jimmy Butler and his crew taken down a notch. The players were fired up too, including Grant Williams. So when Jimmy moved past Williams and scored in the fourth quarter, the two players got into it. They nearly came to blows, shouting and almost headbutting one another as both teams separated them. This came just moments after Grant posted a pretty slick three-pointer over Jimmy. Following that shot, Williams couldn't help but get in Jimmy's face and say a few things on their way back up the court. Little did he know that can of worms he was opening. For the rest of the game, Butler just antagonized Williams, getting shots over him, telling him he was too small, and mocking him at practically every chance he could get. Williams got real quiet real fast, and when the final buzzer sounded, the Celtics were down in the series 2-0 to nothing to the Heat and barely hanging to life. As for Jimmy, he scored 27 points and 8 rebounds to Grant Williams' meager 9 points. Williams had one hot moment, but Butler had a hot game. Then just a week later, they were eliminated from the playoffs and Miami went all the way to the finals. Like Drew Holiday, the 76ers, and even Jimmy Butler's old teams, Grant Williams learned that Jimmy Butler is one bear that you really don't want to poke.